Hi guys, I have a mini review slash first impressions of the Lorac Mega Pro 3 palette. Um, I have, I got it yesterday in the mail, whoa, just threw my white balance off there. I used it today, a few colors on my lids, and that is as far as I've gone with it so far, so I haven't like delved into any of the other eyeshadows. Um, let me just give you a quick it is the same size as the 1 and 2 palettes. It has the big mirror inside. It is all white, so it's going to get filthy. I knew that going into this. Um, it's already dirty, and I've already used it once, so that is the, the downside of this. But this is a very neutral palette. The only really brighter color, I guess you could say, is this red, which is pomegranate. So just like the other, um, the other two Mega Pro palettes, you have two rows of mattes, two rows of shimmers. Um, a lot of colors that look similar, I mean I noticed that in the other two palettes, so just for comparison, this is the first Mega Pro. This is my favorite one. It had a good array of like fun colors and neutrals, and as you can see it's pretty well loved. I've used this one the most out of the three. Obviously I haven't had a chance to use the third one much yet because I just got it yesterday, but this was the first one. And then the second one, to be honest, I've used this maybe a handful of times, but like the makeup obs makeup obsessor in me <laughs> needed to get this one too. So um, this one was more, I don't know, it's just, I really liked Peony and Prosecco, these two colors, as like all over lid shades, but other than that I really don't grab for this one that much. It had a lot, like, more blues, and I don't know. I just don't grab for that one too much. But I figured, since I had the one and two, I would review the third one as well. And this is just a really pretty neutral palette. I'm going to call it a neutral palette because there's not that much color in here. Um, it's got that purple eggplant at the top and then the pomegranate one, and then you get, like, a silver and... So... Today I used, and you'll see the only ones that are touched, I used this tool, I think that's how that's pronounced, all over my lid, so my phone bringing. Okay, sorry I keep getting interrupted, and to go off on a tangent here, look how awesome this t-shirt is. It is South Park, but um, Stranger Things, I'm so excited about this shirt. I got it from Ripped Apparel. I'm obsessed with that place. I just ordered another one that's um, Rugrats and Reptar. So, anyways, hold on, let me fix that. I'm like so not with it today. All right, so as I was saying, um, if you're not familiar with Lorac uh, or Lorac, it's a pronounced Lorac, I guess, because everybody says that the owner. Her name is Carol, and it's just Carol backwards, so I don't know why it's not Lorac for Carol. I, I don't know. They just wanted it to sound fancy, I guess. But if you're not familiar with their eyeshadows, they're all very, very soft. They're all super pigmented, but very soft. And some people don't like that because they say it makes them too powdery and it kicks up too much product and everything. But I happen to really like that because you don't need much of each shadow, which, I mean, they are tiny shadows. Let's just get that out of the way. Each one is... I don't know, it doesn't say. You get, you get 32 shadows in here. So I have to do math here because all it gives you is the entire weight of the palette. So... Um, so the entire palette is 12.8 grams of product. You get 32 eyeshadows, which comes out to about 0.4 grams Per shadow which I mean it's not a lot but like I said they're all super pigmented and you only need a tiny bit of each one I need to stop holding it up because the fact that it's white is throwing my my white balance all off so I'm going to do what I did for the last few swatch videos and angle the camera down um, and that way you won't have to look at like I'm having a terrible bout of dry skin and I don't know why because I'm usually always so oily. It must be the change of seasons. But I will happily take the fall over the summer because <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to angle this down so that you can see. I'll get 
a closer look at the shadows here. Now the cool thing about these is you can completely fold the, um, what do you call it, the mirror backwards. So I can just not have the mirror in the way here. So I'm going to do a few at a time here. Um, I will do the mattes first. Obviously I'm going to start at the top. So the first one is pink cream. And I'm not even going to have to describe these colors because they usually do a good job of just naming it bluntly what it is. Um, I'm going to do it on the back of my hand like I did. So that's just a light pinky cream shade. Then we have tan. I used this in my crease today. I think that's what I was talking about before I got interrupted earlier. I'm talking about what shadows I used on my eyes. Then we have pecan or pecan, however you pronounce it, which is a slightly darker tan shade. Then walnut. bit of a medium brown but you can see they're so soft like every one is super buttery and then dusty mauve I used this on the outer half of my lid today this is a really pretty mauvey purple shade so there's those let me wipe these off and do the next few um, we have violet gray which I also used a little bit of in my outer corner mixed with this the eggplant color which is next this is exactly what it says, a violet gray, or a grayed out violet. Um, eggplant, it's just a dark eggplant berry shade. That one feels a little bit drier, it's not quite as creamy as all the other matte shades. And it looks a little patchy here, but it um, performed really well on the eye, it blends out really nicely. Um, and then dark navy which is a super like blackened blue. I keep forgetting to show it on my finger first. Very nice. Their mattes are definitely some of my favorite matte formulas. Um, then we have Crepe. This is another cream shade. That one's insanely buttery. And then we have Toffee, which is a little bit darker and more yellow toned than the Crepe shade. It's almost like a matte peach. So there's those five. And this is just one swipe of each color and no um, no base or anything. Then we have mist which is a very light gray. That one looks like might be patchy. That's not bad at all. Um, vintage. This is a pretty cool color. This is like a grayish grayish brown. I guess you could call it a taupe, but it's not really as gray as taupes usually are. Hickory. It's like a deep burnt brown color. Um, maple is exactly that, a maple brown. Maple syrup sugar. Maple sugar. <laughs> brown sugar color. Oh, there is one called brown sugar, so I guess I can't call it that. Um, then we have bark, which is like a dark, dark brown. And then, and then jet black. Let's see, their blacks are usually really nice. Yep. That's a very dark black and I'll just do that one by itself one swipe that's crazy definitely loving the mats so far alright so now we go on to the shimmers we have snow which is a white ooh that's a v that would make such a pretty f cheek highlight it's just a very I have nail polish all over my finger very shimmery white shade Ugh. Got black all over me now. Okay. Yeah, that would definitely make a very pretty cheek highlight. Then we have Cava. Cava. Not sure how to pronounce this one, but it's a peachy champagne shade. Another one that would make a nice cheek highlighter. That almost looks like Champagne Pop from Becca. Then we have Cider, which is a warm 
golden brown here. That one's very like metallic. These are all, their shimmers are a mix of shimmers and metallic, so when I say shimmer, <laughs> just consider some of them metallic as well. Then we have Bellini, which is a peach shade. Very pretty. That would probably make a nice, this is all like nice face highlighter shades here. Alright, so that's those four. And then this, the next four in this row are the brown sugar, which is a deep, like metallic chocolate brown. That one's really pretty. You can see everything is like crazy pigmented. Then we have Sequoia. That's kind of on the same idea as this one, but this one's a lot more red. Then you've got Glacier, which looks like it's going to be a crazy silver. Super soft. Ooh, it's almost like a blue silver. That's not like your average silver that you usually get in a palette. That's really pretty. And then Deep Fog. Looks like a deep bluish gray. Those two would actually go really well together to make a super pretty smoky eye. And this has like tiny silver shimmers in it, if you can see. <laughs> Sorry, now the house phone was ringing. Okay, last row here. We have. Now we have Tool, which is a really pretty, I have this on my lid today, it's a very light, almost like iridescent pinkish shade, if my camera will focus. Again, another shade that would make an awesome face highlighter. <laughs> we have Pink Bronze, which is a bronzy, doesn't want to focus now, there we go. Oh, that one's, I think I grabbed a little too much of it. Very pretty. Then we have Rust, which is kind of like a golden copper shade. It's not really like a dark, rusty red shade like I'm used to. Definitely like a copper penny color. Um, rose Quartz. That's really pretty. It's like a rose gold shade. Like a darker version of rose gold. Ooh, that's probably one of my favorites. <laughs> that one's really awesome. Um, and then we have olive, which is exactly that. It's like a shimmery olive shade. Very pretty. Um, dark roast. So like a super dark coffee bean shade is what that reminds me of. I have like cotton ball stuff stuck to my fingers because I had taken off my nail polish and <laughs> so that's what that one looks like. Um, pomegranate is like I said the only like real colorful one in this palette. It's a pinkish red. Ooh, it's more like sheer than I thought it was going to be. Not really sheer, but it's got more of like a, it looks dark in the, like a dark red, and it goes on like a red with pink sheen. And then we have licorice, which I'm guessing is just like this black, only with shimmer in it. It has like tiny, tiny micro silver sparkles in it. My camera doesn't want to focus. So it's not like jet black, like the other one is, like the jet black is, but still pretty pigmented. So I did not have an issue with any of these, which is surprising because usually at least one of the mattes um, will feel a little bit different than the rest of the palette. Like I said, the eggplant one, I think it was, felt a little drier than all the rest that feels super creamy and buttery but no problems like overall with the palette except for the fact that it's gonna get filthy and it's gonna bug me because <laughs> you can see all the little all the little spots already 
So I am going to flip the camera back up here. All right, so that is it for my swatches. I definitely, I wouldn't say this is like a must-have palette. Um, if you don't have the other two, then I would say go for it because the Lorac Mega Pro palettes, I mean, they're... Their pro palettes are half the size and almost the same price, so you're getting a lot for your money in here because I believe um, the shadows are the same size in all of them. I could be wrong, but their holiday palettes are always worth it to me because you're getting 32 shadows in here, which that's kind of, it's good and bad because you're getting a lot for your money, but to me anyway, these palettes are pretty overwhelming, so I don't grab for them all that much because there's just so many different shades in here but I don't know this one seems like one I'm gonna use a lot because it's got a lot of neutrals in there very very like everyday wearable shades I would like to see Lorac do like a super bright palette but they don't seem like a brand that's ever going to do that so um, I will just wait for the uh, the Urban Decay full spectrum palette I'm really excited about that I don't need it because I have that the Kat Von D Mi Vita Loca Remix one, which is like all the rainbow shades you'd ever need in a palette, but still excited for it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my swatches, and I hope you've been liking the way I've been doing it with tilting the camera down and doing it that way. I just feel like you can see everything better than when I'm holding, holding my hand up like this and waiting for the camera to focus and everything, so that is about it for the my first impressions of the Lorac Mega Pro 3. Um, like I was saying before, and then I got interrupted and I think I forgot to finish talking about it, the colors I used today, I used tan as my transition shade, I used pink cream as my brow hi highlight, I used tulle on the inner half of my lid, and then I used dusty mauve on the outer half, and I used a mixture of violet gray and eggplant on the outer corners. So that is, I tried to use a handful of colors at least to get a feel for the palette, but they're just like the other Lorac shadows in the Mega Pro uh, 1 and 2, and the ones that are in like all their other shadows, so all their other palettes. They're very soft and blendable and creamy and buttery, and they're awesome, so I hope you guys enjoyed my video, and I will talk to you in my next one.